Hey Adventures, so today is a review for The Blinding Knife by Brent Weeks. This is book two of the Lightbringer series. I read the first book, uh, I want to say back in like March or April, something like that. So back at the beginning of the year, I really, really enjoyed it. It was actually far surpassed my expectations for the series. And from what I'd heard of Kate, who had read the, or had started at least reading the, I can't remember what the, his other series about the assassin, she didn't love it. And so I was expecting not to find this series as enjoyable as I was expecting, or as I was hoping, rather. And I read the first book and I absolutely loved it. I didn't do a review of the first book because I was doing reviews differently and I couldn't quite figure out how to format it and do a review of it and stuff like that. So there's... Well, um, I didn't get a review done for the first one, so my review of the first book is that I loved it. I thought it was amazing. It went above and beyond my expectations for the book. The second one, I read the second one in the story itself was amazing. The characters were amazing. The world building, the magic usage, the explanation of the just everything really worked really well and I thought it was very fun and there was a couple things that I didn't love about the various world building but I didn't hate it either. I don't I can't think of something that I actually hated about the world building. That being said, I did have a few gripes with the book itself, the the way it was written, stuff like that. And so I'll get those out of the way first so that I can just continue on and talk about the things that I liked about the book. The first, the biggest thing that I really did not enjoy with this book, the second book in the series, was there was a lot more language. In fact, I don't remember any language in book one, but there was a ton of it in book two. And there was also a ton of adult content in book two. And I was like, why is this here? It doesn't need to be here. And the fact that it wasn't in the first book, none of that stuff was in the first book, made it so much more annoying to me in the second book. I, I felt it was completely unnecessary and I didn't like it at all. I don't like it in normal books, but or in other books, even when it is there, but because it was here in the second book and but not in the first, and so I knew that he could write a story and could tell the story without it, it annoyed me infinitely more than it would in any other book, probably. So that's really my biggest issue with this book. Other than that, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought there was a lot of great things about it. After reading this second book, I feel like this series has a potential to be one of the one of my favorite series of all time. The fact that this can be a favorite series of mine is still pretty impressive and I'm very, very happy with that and very excited to continue on with the series now. We got a lot of explanation and uh, fleshing out of how the magic system works in this one and I really like that one of the aspects that of world building that was tied into the magic system which, as it should be um, was I think it's I, I can't remember the exact name of it but the the card game that they're playing I think it's nine kings if it's not um, correct me in the comments I guess because I don't feel like doing research to find out right now but I think it's nine kings and that card game and how that well, basically how that ties into the world, how that ties into the magic system, everything about it and everything that you learn about it going through the book and you can know, oh, there's going to be so much more going on with this. That was just super cool to me. The Banes, um, if you've read the books, you know what I'm talking about, but the magical gods, basically, very interesting. I, I have a hard time completely understanding it because they didn't really completely explain it. But I think I'm starting to understand it, and I've got there's some there's some Lightbringer videos that I can watch that I will be going back to after I finish the series to gain a better understanding of anything that I might have missed. Um, so I'm excited to do that. But I want to just continue through the series and see how much I can figure out for myself. But there was just, just a lot of really cool stuff. The um, new colors that we were introduced to, the new character. There's quite a few new characters as well. It's just I'm very enjoyable. Most of the characters were really fleshed out and their reasons for doing what they're doing actually make a lot of sense most of the time. So that was really cool. I mean, there's there's some characters that are a bit of mustache twirling evil type characters. Like I, there's definitely some of those characters in it, but for the most part, all the characters are, I say that they're, they're those just evil to be evil characters. But I think that's just because we don't understand them yet. We don't know them yet. At this moment, that's what they seem like. But as we go continue on into the rest of the series, we will get a greater understanding of it. A lot of information on who the Lightbringer will be, what that means, all that stuff. 
a lot of really cool stuff and I'm very, very excited to continue on with the series. Actually some developments between characters that I really enjoyed that I thought were really cool. There was one thing that kind of I wasn't expecting and it really actually kind of shocked me when I read it. I was like, whoa, he really just did that? And so like there's there's moments like that, but then they if you look back, there's actually set up for him, there's they it's paid off. It makes sense with where the character is at in their decision and their mindset and everything. So like I understand it and it works really good and then the the ending. The ending was uh with with Sander Sand novels, we call, call the ending a Sanderlanch because so much happens all at once. It's just, it's like an avalanche. So we call it a Sanderlanch. Brent Weeks did what in this book. He had a, a avalanche of just everything going on at once. Impressive feat of writing. And it's, it's very cool to see and I, I really enjoyed that as well. I think that's about it for my review of The Blinding Knife. I don't have a ton more thoughts on it, but I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you guys for watching in Arctic Adventure. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. We have our social medias linked in the description down below. We'll see you guys again soon. Stay warm.